Epic Hero Game. Best video game you have probably never heard of. It's a superhero game that combines elements from totally accurate battle simulator and anime such as Dragon Ball and of course One Punch Man. In a nutshell, you are defending against an alien invasion, and your objective is to prevent as much damage to the world as possible. This means that with great power comes great responsibility, since the game is all about having the most over-the-top special attacks you could imagine, so even if you could wipe all the aliens in one go, you might want to reconsider, cause that would also destroy the world, making you lose the mission. And the way you build your hero will entirely change the gameplay experience. If you go for a mobile build, it's going to be easier to dodge incoming spells, but get hit once, and you will be going flying like a baseball. And if you go for a Hulk build, you're able to face tank everything, not even flinch, you get the point. That sounds cool and all, but how does one even begin to build something like this? Let's rewind around three years ago when I first started learning about active ragdolls. <laughs> An active ragdoll is the fusion of physics-driven skeleton and animation-driven skeleton, where the physics body attempts to follow the animated skeleton. This is achieved by calculating a difference between the physical and the animated state, and then applying the difference as a velocity to the joints. And since the humanoid is physics-driven, it will react to its surroundings naturally. Well, somewhat naturally. Let's just ignore that part and move on. One thing anime does really well is environmental storytelling. You can tell how powerful a character is based on how much the environment is destroyed around the fight. This is so much cooler than just spawning a hit text that displays a number. I started with the thing that I already knew how to do. Destroy the models in Blender and then use the debris to create the effect. However, this would only work with 3D models and it didn't have the punch that I was going for. So it was clear that some kind of voxel magic was required. Everything in 3D graphics is a triangle, and if you duplicate it enough times, you have a terrain. And since it's made of individual triangles, to cause a dent in it, all you need to do is to move individual triangles around. That works, but to achieve more complex dents, I need to generate more geometry. And the hard part is to figure out where exactly those new triangles should go. Thankfully, smart people have invented the marching cubes algorithm for that. The idea is that you have points aka voxels in 3D space and you move a cube through them and check if any of the vertices of the cube collided with the points. And the combination of the collisions will be used to find a triangle configuration used to generate the mesh. Sebastian Lake has made a very in-depth explanation how it works. Make sure to check it out, link to the video in the description. The last part of the puzzle to create a game is a solid ability system. Both the player and the enemies would be using it, and since I'm mainly a programmer, this system would have a total authority how the character behaves. I'm talking about being able to define which exact frame the animation is playing at, how much should you move, hitboxes, knockbacks, and so on. The nice thing about this design is that the AI only needs to worry about when it should start and stop the ability, making programming the AI way simpler. And if I need to add a very specific attack for a boss, I would extend the ability that enables the attack itself. Now that there is a toolbox to build the game with, the next step is to actually make it fun to play. Here is a famous quote from Jamie Chrismer. In Halo 1, there was probably 30 seconds of fun that happened over and over again. So if you can get 30 seconds of fun, you can pretty much stretch that out to be an entire game. But if you don't nail that 30 seconds, you're not going to have a great game. So after a couple rounds of playtesting, thanks Harold, the main point of the feedback to me was that it was too difficult to deal with the smaller minions. The reason being, there is no animation to indicate that an attack is incoming, so the player has virtually no time to react to it. And that's where I started. And then it suddenly hit me. Now that there was a brief window to think, it's basically a minigame. But do you do now? Do you dodge? Do you block? Or perhaps even knock the enemies back when they are jumping towards you? Now I'm thinking that if I just design every monster in the game to be its own minigame, the game is going to be great. But why stop there? If there is way to do this with the player as well, why not give it a shot? I was looking at the tools that the player had, and grappling hook was standing out because it was just a targeted dash, and I felt like I could minigamify it by making it controllable with movement. We don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. To make the grappling hook controllable with movement, I needed to change it from raw translation to use forces. And when applying the force to the player, instead of using delta for the direction, I used the normalized direction and multiplied it by the speed. Which caused the player to overshoot from the target, that is the arrow. Creating this masterpiece. 
When I discovered this was a thing, no joke, I spent the next 30 minutes just flying around because how much fun it was. Now it was clear that I was on the right path. In the next episode of Epic Hero Game, will the developer ever fix any of the bugs? Or will he just continue to add more and more features ensuring that he adds more and more bugs and never subsequently finishes with any end date in sight and also means that he will have many more devlogs to run? Probably. Find out in the next episode of Epic Hero Game. The devlog that you can catch on YouTube.